Okay. Now coming to the process of nutrition or the process of digestion actually. So what happens? Now you eat food. Let us say you have eaten a burger. Okay. Do you like burgers? I like uh, chicken burgers. So I have eaten a chicken burger. So what happens? So this is the food particles of the chicken burger which is inside your mouth. You have the teeth which is going to chew on it. So this process is called as mastication. So it is chewing on it and as you chew on it, now the burger is little dry so it has to become moist. So you have the juice, the salivary juice which makes it moist. So therefore it is broken down from a burger into something which is much more softer. Okay. So what happens next? So in the mouth this is a large complex carbohydrate it gets broken down to a smaller much more soluble carbohydrate and this takes place because in the saliva there is an enzyme called as salivary enzyme. So in the presence of this enzyme it is broken down from a polysaccharide which is complex to a disaccharide maltose which is less complex and much more simpler. Okay. So in the mouth break down from starch to maltose complex to something which is a little simpler but not totally simple. So part of the digestion has taken place over there. Now from there no further digestion in either the pharynx or in the food pipe. So it enters into the stomach and in the stomach you see the gastric juice contains hydrochloric acid. So it is entered here and in the stomach two enzymes are released and these are mainly protein enzymes. So they are called as pepsin and renin of which the most important is the pepsin and along with this what else is released? Mucin or mucus. So now in the presence of hydrochloric acid this pepsin enzyme breaks down the protein which is present in the food into a smaller or much more easily digestible substance called as the peptones. Now you have the muscles which is present in the stomach, it churns up all this food because of the contraction which is caused by the muscle and then it pushes the food from the end through one gateway you remember called as the sphincter, the pyloric sphincter and it enters into the duodenum. Now once it enters into the duodenum, you have the bile which is being released by the liver and then you have the pancreatic juice. So the pancreatic juice contains three types of enzymes. So you have the trypsin, the amylase and the lipase. So the trypsin acts on the protein, amylase acts on the carbohydrate and the lipase acts on the fat. So what about the bile? The bile also acts upon the fat. So let us see how that takes place. Okay. So now the bile acts upon the fat and it goes through something a process which is called as emulsification. So it is like you put soap on your hands and you try to wash it with just water. It is uh, you put oil sorry you put oil on your hands and you just try to wash it with water oil is not going to go off. But if you add soap onto it and you wash it then the oil is going to break down and it is going to be washed off. So it is a very similar process where the bile will act on the large molecule of fat and break it down into smaller globules. So this is called as emulsification and this smaller globule is further acted upon by lipase which is present in the pancreas and that further is broke down, break, broken down into fatty acids. Okay, so you have had this entire process of digestion. Now digestion has taken place so the next step is absorption. So the process of this absorption now takes place in the last part of the small intestine which is called as the ileum. Remember those beautiful projections inside the ileum, those villi. Okay, so this is where it comes in. So this villi is surrounded by blood vessels. So when this digested food in the most simplest form enters into the villi, it gets absorbed through the villi and it enters through the blood into the rest of the body. Okay. So this process is called as assimilation. 
okay. And the final step is ejection or excretion. So, in this process whatever food is not being digested that goes into the large intestine where the water which is very uh, essential for the body gets absorbed, it forms a solid mass and it is excreted through the colon, the rectum and finally through the anal opening. Okay, so, a quick recap, so you have the mouth here, breaks down food into smaller particles as it mixes with the saliva through the salivary juice which contains the salivary enzyme. So, here only the carbohydrate, complex carbohydrate broken down into less complex form, not totally simple form, less complex form. The food pipe is uh, carries the food from the mouth into the stomach, this red thing is the stomach over here. Stomach secretes gastric juice and this juice contains hydrochloric acid which acts on the enzyme pepsin and this pepsin breaks down the protein into smaller proteins called peptones. The stomach churns the food and pushes it into the duodenum which is the small intestine where you have the bile which acts upon the fat here causes emulsification production of fat globules. Then you have the pancreas here, see this yellow thing. So, that secretes all the three enzymes that is trypsin acts on protein, amylase acts on carbohydrates and you have uh, also the lipase which acts on the fat. So, this further breaks down those globules into fatty acid plus glycerol. So, this process further continues in the duodenum and the jejunum where uh, the uh, food is broken down into the simplest form until it reaches the ileum which is the last part of the intestine where the absorption takes place through the villi, remember that word villi. Now whatever is not digested enters into this is the large intestine, enters into the large intestine, water is absorbed, a solid bulk is left behind, enters into the last part here called as the rectum and comes out through the anal opening. Okay. A quick recap and a summary for you of the various glands and enzymes which are present. So, you have the salivary glands present in the mouth, the secretion saliva, present site of action, buccal cavity, oral cavity, mouth, enzyme, salivary enzyme, food acts on the carbohydrate or starch, end product, maltose, disaccharide. Okay. It is not a monosaccharide, it is a disaccharide. Now, the stomach, gastric glands, gastric juice, hydrochloric acid, site of action, stomach, enzymes, pepsin, renin acts on protein. So, pepsin is the main thing, acts on proteins, renin acts on milk. So, this converts the proteins into smaller molecules called peptones. Okay. Then we come to the liver, the juice here is bile, site of action. Now, re remember it is produced in the liver but it acts in the small intestine, the odinum. So, it and the bile itself is the enzyme here. So, acts on fat, emulsification of fat into fat globules. Then you have the pancreas, pancreatic juice which again acts on the duodenum, does not act in the pancreas. Three enzymes, amylase, trypsin, lipase, amylase on starch, glycogen, trypsin on proteins, lipase on the emulsified fats. So, here it is converted into the smaller carbohydrates, proteins into peptones, peptides or amino acids as we call them, emulsified fats, the end product, fatty acids and glycerol. So, intestinal glands also have intestinal juice, the small intestine also has all these enzymes which act upon carbohydrates, fat and proteins and breaks them down further into the final end product which is the monoglycerides, the glucose which is a monosaccharide, amino acid end product of proteins. Okay. So, from here from the ileum it gets absorbed into the rest of the body. What is left behind in the large intestine will be the remaining undigested food. So, water is absorbed, so fecal matter, some amount of water is required to make the fecal matter also little soft otherwise you will end up with uh, very hard stools and some of you might have heard that I am constipated, I cannot pass uh, stools and it is very hard. So, some amount of water is retained over here. 
Okay, that brings us to the end of this class and in the next class we will be talking about respiration. So, always remember to summarize at the end, so it is easier for you to remember. Okay, so thank you.